Hello, Anders from Mind the Shift. In my last little video, I promised or <laughs> I hinted that I was gonna, in this one, in this next video, talk about meaning of life. It was partly a joke, but anyway, I will actually try and give it a shot here, a small shot. Uh, I'm gonna talk about something called Occam's Razor, if you're fam familiar with that term. It's a philosophical and scientific term, uh, which means that you should, uh, the, the simplest explanation to a phenomenon is often the most correct one. So you shouldn't, you should opt for the explanations that are the simplest ones and that don't uh, apply new entities that you're, you, you don't know of uh, on beforehand. So the simplest and the most known uh, aspects of, of the phenomenon is what you should apply to find the solution, the explanation for something. Uh, that's Occam's razor. It's named after a 14th century uh, English friar and philosopher and uh, theologist. Anyway, uh, so it's about Occam's razor and the so-called hard problem of consciousness. Everyone who has um, read about, studied uh, the research on consciousness knows that mainstream scientists, the ones that are still very reluctant to go into what is normally referred to as the spiritual realm, they are trying to find consciousness somewhere in the brain, of course, because every, everything, according to mainstream science, is physics and it's uh, all these phenomena that we uh, that we experience within ourselves, all these, these uh, notions about things are, are just uh, results of neurologic activity in the brain. So they're trying to find uh, where consciousness is placed, more or less, in the, in, in the brain. Uh, but, uh, and then the, the hard problem is, is ironically, the problem that uh, it's difficult to explain why we have these sensory uh, perceptions at all, uh, wh why we why we have a sense of self and a sense of uh, uh, experiencing things uh, at all. What is that? Uh, and anyway, so the um, if you try to apply Occam's razor on this, and, and Occam's razor is is a philosophical principle, but it's also a scientific principle. So it's often applied in, in science uh, with the underlying, underlying assumption that it when you use it you come to the conclusions of the mainstream science for the most part because those are supposedly the, the simplest ones. But I want to enhance Occam's razor a little bit. At least as far as I've understood how it is interpreted, I think this is an enhancement that I'm going to uh, talk about now, namely to, to add intuition, what seems intuitively the most simple explanation. Because, I mean, after all, we are human beings and we, we kind of intuit uh, things. We come to conclusions out of an intuitive uh, realization, often. So, uh, what is the simplest and what is the more complicated explanation? So, the mainstream so-called rational scientific view is that consciousness is a side effect of the brain's activity and that there is no inherent meaning in life. There is no meaning to anything of this. It's just, I mean, the, the only meaning that we can apply to life is the meaning that we invent ourselves by applying, by using our thinking abilities. We can think ourselves to some kind of meaning. And the other side of, of, of it, the other, if you pitch that against the, the, <laughs> the other view, uh, um, which is then that consciousness is something that is independently work. It, it's independent of the brain. It's somewhere in the non-physical. And it's an intrinsic property of the universe, actually. It's not that consciousness is a side effect of the physical things uh, that, that operate here, biological uh, robots, more or less. Um, but it's actually the other way around, that consciousness is what precedes matter. Consciousness 
is what comes first and then it's matter. Anyway, that's, that's the, the second view, which uh, I'm a proponent of if you have, if you have missed that. So the main, mainstream rational science view is that it's a side effect, consciousness is a side effect, and there is no meaning. And the view that I am a proponent of says that uh, it is intrinsic, it explains also the sense of self, why we have a sense of self, and there is meaning, there is meaning to it. Because if there is, if consciousness is operating outside of the physical body, the physical brain, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 that goes very, very closely with the notion that there is some kind of intelligence, some kind of source, whatever you might call that, behind the whole thing. And that gives meaning, that gives some meaning. You don't, we're not capable of understanding the full extent of that meaning, of course. We can't, we can't grasp that. That's too big. But we can have some kind of an inherent, in, intrinsic sense of meaning. And, you know, that takes us back to the, the, the worldview that most very young children have. We have had, a, we've had that, all of us, most, most of us anyway, when we were very, very young, small children, we had that uh, sense of meaning because this life was a big adventure and uh, the sense of self was... Uh, self-evident and self-explanatory we didn't we didn't uh, i mean it was it was obvious to us that this was very very meaningful this this whole experience of being here on earth so if you apply these two different views on things on what consciousness might be and where it might be residing um uh, and use Occam's razor, the enhanced version of Occam's razor, where you also apply the intuitive way of uh, realizing things, then voila! The simpler explanation is the one which has meaning, because that's what's intuitively more normal to us, because the scientific view, the very harsh mainstream nat natural science view of this uh, entails that we have to apply all these complicated findings that science have made during decades and centuries and science loves to uh, make use of those. It's like science almost says when we come to this conclusion intuitively, of course there's meaning. I can feel the beauty of nature, the beauty of feeling love towards uh, towards the beauty of the world and towards other people and towards animals and towards everything, towards what I can experience in life. Uh, 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 no, 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 it's not that simple, science says. Science says you have to look at this closer, you have to disseminate it, you have to think about it, and you have to apply all these complicated findings that we have uh, come to during all these decades and, and centuries of, of research. And then you will find that it's not that, not that simple, uh, <laughs> meaning that it's, uh, of course, it can't, there, there can't be um, some, some force outside of the body because all we can know from science is what we can study in the physical realm, so the physical realm is all there is. And that's actually not as simple as it sounds. Well, if you listen to the mainstream discussion about these things going on out there, you might come to the conclusion that, of course, the, the physical explanation is the, is the simplest one. But I don't think so. It's actually not the case if you t take into account the intuitive conclusion, which is that there is meaning. If you take that away, you feel miserable. We all know that, and uh, <laughs> that's not simple, if you ask me. Anyway, so this was a, a, an attempt to to uh, come to a conclusion about what consciousness is and not is using Occam's razor and to solve the so-called hard problem of consciousness. I will go deeper into this and um, explain more of what I mean in uh, an essay that I will publish on Medium. 
I've got a few articles and essays on Medium, so if you haven't checked that out, go to Medium and do so, if you like. And I will be publishing next Wednesday the next episode of Mind the Shift, and we'll see you in the next video. Love you. Bye-bye.